Hello everyone, welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, Topaz Studio 2, our creative toolbox. We're getting out that impression filter again. We're going to make another painting. We're going to use some other filters along the way. This is going to be a fun episode. We're starting out with this image. We're going to end up with this image right here. It's going to be a lot of fun. So without any further ado, let's get started. Starting out here in Photoshop, I went ahead and duplicated my background layer so I can work non-destructively. I'm coming up to Filter, coming down to Topaz Studio 2, and I'm launching Topaz Studio 2. And away we go. I'm going to start off by adding a filter. Uh, it's a little painting today, so I'm going to click on Impression. And let's just work around here and see what we get. Uh, I'm going to... Let's see... What do I want to do? I'm going to change my number of strokes, I think, to low. It gives you a little more painterly look. I mean, and right out of the gate, that's looking pretty nice. Next, I think I'm going to go down and work with my width of my strokes a little bit and my length. And I want a little larger. Maybe, yeah, maybe something like that. That's looking pretty nice. Um, we can go through and sample a few different brushes here. see what we think and that's not bad let me go back to the first brush Nah, I'm gonna go with that first brush I tend to like the first brush a lot of the time let's go with the paint opacity and turn it up so we can get some you know you get more of a painterly look when you turn up this opacity here and let's how about the paint volume now, I also like to open up the histogram to make sure we're not blowing out the highlights because if you take this paint volume up, see how your highlights over here can get blown out really quick. So you got to be careful with this uh, paint volume adjustment here. So I'm going to ease that back a little bit. Let's check the paint opacity again. Yeah, something like that. That's looking really nice so far. Let's come down here to painting progress. I love this one too. So if you ease this back, it'll go through the different process that it took to get here. See, it started here, and it built itself up slowly, slowly, slowly. And I like to run this up slowly just to get it to the point where I think I like that look. Like right there looks kind of nice and abstract. Even back a little bit more. That's pretty cool. Let me go to the right a little more and make sure I have it, you know... I've exhausted all my possibilities here. Okay. Gonna find that point that I really like. I'm thinking right around there looks pretty good. And then we could come down to color and we could play around with the color a little bit. Uh, for instance, let's go to the pinks here. And maybe bump up the pink saturation a little bit. Because there's some nice pink in that flower. Maybe there. And we can play with its hue a little bit. Maybe somewhere around there. And then we can adjust the lightness of it. Darken it up. Lighten it up. Let me double click it. Get it back to where it was. I think that was good. I'm going to come to the um, lighting here. And I think what I want to do is I want to pull these highlights back a little bit here. Because I think those highlights are getting a little bit strong. And I want to tame those down. Okay. And how about the overall brightness here? Yeah, maybe something like that. Now, if you click on the canvas here, left-click it with your mouse, you can see the before and after. And I'm liking that so far. I think I might be a little too strong in that pink. I'm at 0.33. I'm just going to pull that back a little bit to maybe like a 0.28, just to ease off in that a little bit. Okay, and next I'm going to add a, a filter that I really like to use, and that is um, Precision Contrast with painting, because it, it actually makes the paint strokes come out a little bit stronger. I'm going to start with a Micro and pull those up. Now, I don't think I'm going to apply this everywhere. I'm going to apply it mainly to the flower and the vase that the flower's in. And so that's kind of what I'm looking at. So I'm working with the micro. Now I'm working with the low. 
Let's play with a medium. Maybe not quite as much. And then let's look at the high. Maybe I'll pull the high back a little bit to the left. And then let's come up to the uh, layer mask icon and let's invert this. Come to the three dots, click invert, get yourself a brush. And I'm going to paint with white paint. I'm going to move that transparency, as you see, the whole way to the right. Get, adjust my radius here. And what I want to do is paint that effect on the flower and on the vase. And I have the edge wear on, which is going to help. Okay, see that right there? Now I'll put it on the vase here. And maybe that one little flower petal that is right here. Make my brush a little smaller. I'll pull the radius to the left a little bit. Paint on there. And you know where else I might paint is on this foreground area here where the uh, vase is sitting on. So... I'm up at 100% or up to white paint, 100% white paint. I should say make my radius a little bigger. And I'm just going to paint across here in this section right here. Just to add a little bit more detail in there. Now let's come back up to precision contrast. And let's see what we got here. Let's see if I want to pull the micro up anymore. Yeah, I might want to pull that micro up just a little bit. Now let's click this uh, eyeball here so we can see there's before and there's the after. But yeah, see that how it draws some emphasis into the vase. Now I'm going to come and add another filter. And this time I'm going to get a uh, precision detail filter. This is more of a sharpening filter. Now I'm only interested in this vase right here and maybe this petal down here. So what I'm going to do is pull up the small detail. And we can work with small, medium, and large details. So I'm going to pull the small detail up a good bit here. And how about the medium? Let's see what we got here. Not quite as much on the medium. And how about the large? Not quite as much there. And let me go into shadows because I'm looking right over on this darker side here. And let's pull up the medium there. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Somewhere around in there. Let me try the small there. Not so much. I'm going to double click that and let's try the large. I don't want to go too crazy, but I might want to add a little bit of the large detail there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and come to the layer mask and we're going to come to the three dots here. Give that a click and we're going to invert that. And now we're going to get a brush. Make sure your transparency slid the whole way over to the right so we have white paint. And I'm going to go ahead and paint that on this vase. Because I just want this vase to be standing out a little bit more. I'm trying to build a little bit of depth into this image here. Yeah, you see that? Let's make my radius a little bit smaller. Yeah, I'm going to paint on this petal here, but not quite at full transparency. I'm going to ease this off a little bit. We can sample this and try it and see. We can always change this if we don't like it. It's not strong enough. I want it a little bit stronger, so I'm going to just take this transparency, pull it up a little more, and paint over it again. Yeah, because I just want your eye to be drawn to that. That's pretty good. Now, I think what I'm going to do is, at that at that amount of transparency, kind of a it's a lighter color. Make my brush a little bigger, and I'm going to paint over the uh, the floor that this is uh, vase is sitting on, or the table, more than likely. So let's get the radius and bump it up some. And let's paint over here. Going to miss that petal there. Yeah. That's pretty nice, right? See, because that adds a little bit of depth there. Looking pretty good so far. The next thing I want to do is play around with this background. I'm not really happy with this background color, so I'm going to get a filter here. Come up to Add Filter. And it's called Color Theme. This is a really cool filter. It breaks your image down the way I believe it does it. It takes the five most dominant colors of your image and breaks them down. Then you can alter those colors. So this is the original color up here, and you can alter them down here. Now, right now, they're the same until you alter them. So I'm going to go to uh, this second one right here. And that's the number of that color, by the way. And I'm going to see right now it's in the brown tones. I'm going to click over here in these... Um, more pinker tones. 
And right there, look how that harmonizes the image. That's pretty cool. Let's click the eye right here. There's the before and after. Now you can also come in here and you can uh, move, move these around. Now this was the color right here. I can move this up or down, give it more color, less color. But right around there, I think I picked the right one. And I can adjust the lightness of it as well. And then this color right in here, here's another color in here. Let's play with that one. That's this guy right here. So let me click on it. And as you can see, it's right here. Let me click over into the pinker tones here. Yeah, just to tone those into the little more pinker tones. Now, if that was too much, I could pull it down just a little bit. It just adds a little bit of a pink cast, which I think that looks good. Now, let's click the eyeball here. There's the before and there's the after. And I think that looks really good. The last thing I want to do, there's a little bit of pink here in this vase right here. Now, there would be some natural pink in here do the reflection off the off the flower but I think it's a little too strong so what I'm going to do is come to add filter get another HSL filter or hue saturation luminance color tuning filter and I'm going to go to the pink color I'm going to pull the saturation the whole way off and also I think there might be some purple tone in there so I might pull that back too yeah see there was some purple in there as well and maybe even just a little bit of red in there. Let's try something like that. Let's come up here to the layer mask and let's invert that. And I'll get a brush and that's a good size. Make sure I'm painting with a white. So I've moved my transparency the whole way to the right. And now I'm going to paint that adjustment on. like so and I have the edge wear on as well yeah so there you go let's uh let's click the eyeball here's the before and here's the after and if I went a little too strong there because uh, I might want to let, let a little hint of that pink through so I might just take my opacity and just take it off and then just add a little bit of that back in there maybe something like that now let's click the eyeball Here's the before and there's the after. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and click accept. This will bring us back into Photoshop. Let's go ahead and zoom in because I see something on the image right here. See this little bit of pink splash here? Not a big deal, but I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to put a blank layer, this little icon right here, give it a click. Puts a blank pixel layer there. I'm going to get my healing brush right here. You can type J for your healing brush. That's the shortcut key. Make sure you have sample all layers set. And the reason I'm doing this blank layer is so I can work non-destructively. And I'm just going to paint over that little pink right there. And maybe this little pink right here. Just clean this edge up here a little bit. I'm holding the space bar down and then I'm dragging across. There's a little bit of, of pink right up here. Get my healing brush here. Right there. And let me just move it again. That's looking good. Let me zoom back out. Yeah, that looks better and I'm happy with that. Well, there you go. A happy little painting using Topaz Studio 2. I hope you enjoyed this one today. Give it a try. Pull out that impression filter. Now, at this point with my image, I could flatten it and save it into whatever format or formats that I wanted to, or I could save it as a PSD and work on it later. But that's totally up to you, however you want to do it. I hope you enjoyed this one today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. Uh, also, please leave comments and questions in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Thanks again for viewing today and watching the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see each and every one right here next time. Until then, happy editing.